If you are planning to try the cabbage soup diet, then make sure that you watch this whole video because there are some things you need to know. And make sure you stay till the end for some exclusive pro tips to make this process a lot less painful. Do not just blindly follow the rules like I did. Just look at me at the beginning of this. So young, so innocent, so gullible. <sighs> okay, let's go. You know what time it is? It's time to drop some pounds. It's time to test another fat crash diet. Lately, I have been feeling super bloated and I am ready to get skinny again. Oh yes, we're going to be skinny like a twig. Just one week from now, because the seven day cabbage soup diet, also known as the wonder soup, the peel a pound soup, promises a weight loss of 10 to 15 pounds in just one week. Oh my God, wow. And I am all here for it. Hi, I'm Looney and this week I am trying the cabbage soup diet for detox and fast weight loss. When I first heard about this diet, naturally my first thought was that you will eat plain cabbage soup for breakfast, lunch and dinner. But no, wait, there's more. Apparently there's a set of very oddly specific rules of all these other foods that you should eat along with your soup. All seven of the days you can have as much soup as you want, unlimited amount. You can frolic in the cabbage soup to your heart's content for a whole week. But on the first day you could also have as much fruit as you want, on the second day as much vegetables as you want, and so on, which looks pretty good to me because that means you're not going hungry. I searched the internet high and low and it sort of seemed like there is no definite one recipe. Everyone sort of seemed to have their own twist on it and it just seemed that as long as it doesn't include any starchy vegetables like peas, corn, potatoes, you can pretty much adjust it to your liking. So in order to not get bored with eating the same thing for seven days in a row, I decided to switch the recipe up every other day, which means that I will be trying four different cabbage soup recipes in a week and hopefully that and all this extra stuff that you can eat will be able to get me through the week. You should also drink at least eight glasses of water a day and avoid any sugar in your food and drinks. Okay, let's get on with it. It is now 4.30 a.m. and here I am cooking my breakfast soup. My first recipe is the closest to the classical wonder soup, peel a pound soup, cabbage soup that I could find. I have one cabbage, one green bell pepper, two stalks of celery, two carrots, garlic, chopped basil, one onion, and two cans of tomatoes. I haven't even started yet and I'm already majorly cramping. It's like my stomach just looked at all the fiber and panicked. Excuse me, sir. Sir, this is a low protein diet. Would you mind getting out of my cabbage? Yeesh. Can't trust Walmart these days. Now I have to spend an extra half an hour to double check every square inch of my cabbage. I started by sauteing the onion and garlic with a light spray of olive oil, then adding the rest of the veggies and tomato. Whatever spices you want and as much water as you like, depending on how thick you like your soups. You can also blend the soup later if you don't like the texture. I found that the amount of any of those ingredients varied a lot from one recipe to another. One of them said half an onion and another one said six onions. So basically you can add more or less of any of the ingredients as long as the bulk of it is cabbage. It's pretty good. We're like five minutes in and I don't hate it yet. So that's a good sign. On day two, I was having the leftover soup from the day before. Plus according to the rules, I was allowed unlimited amount of vegetables, except starchy ones. So I had maybe four, five smallish bowls of soup and for dinner I was allowed a baked potato with butter. So I had this potato with spring onion, tomatoes and some sautéed bell peppers and onions. It was absolutely delicious and I did not get hungry anymore. In fact, the only day I actually felt hungry was the very first day and it was also the only day I got a headache the whole day. Day three and it's time to switch up the cabbage soup recipe so we don't get fed up. Since I had such good results with the surf food diet, I decided to make a surf food version of the cabbage soup. So here we have cabbage, kale. I had to sacrifice my dry clothes to get some kale from the garden. But it's okay because we're gonna be skinny like a tweet. Red onion, carrots, celery, parsley, chopped ginger, quite a bit of chopped garlic. I saw some people also adding mushrooms to the peel a pound soup. So I'm throwing in some mushrooms 
just for the sake of it. As we are already third fooding and all, I decided to throw in a couple extra third foods. Turmeric and a squeeze of lemon. Admittedly, this soup does not look as appetizing as the first one. Okay, let's try this suspicious looking green goop. Oh my god. I have created a masterpiece. It tastes a little bit sweeter than the first recipe. The other one was a lot more savory, maybe because of the tomatoes. It's actually really tasty. I actually ended up eating just a bit of broccoli and a quarter of watermelon in addition to the soup on my third day. Unfortunately, we all know that cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli and cabbage can cause flatulence. Luckily, I had not had huge problems with this issue for the first three days. No diarrhea, no constipation, not a terrible amount of gas, maybe a little bit of bloating, but nothing remarkable. But little did I know, this was all about to change. On bananas and milk day, you are allowed to eat unlimited amount of cabbage soup, but you could also eat eight bananas and eight classes of skim milk. Although some sources say unlimited amount of skim milk. I mean, it was all good up to maybe five bananas. Banana number five of the day. I shouldn't be showing you this, should I? This is not OnlyFans. But it went downhill really fast as soon as I had half a gallon of milk on top of that. I mean, I pretty much could not leave the bathroom for the rest of the day. Explosive diarrhea and toxic gas would be a major understatement. I mean, I couldn't get the exact footage of my house, but this is almost as severe as bananas and milk day. You have been warned. In the morning, I was exceptionally weak. Everyone in the house was exhausted. Since nobody could get any sleep thanks to the orchestra of demons being exercised from the bowels through my backside. It took me a while to get myself to the point where I could get up and peel and chop the vegetables to make another soup. For this soup we have beetroot, green bell pepper, onion, carrots, celery, rest of the mushrooms, garlic, and since I can now have meat, we are adding some chicken. I actually make this soup occasionally, so I knew I was already going to like it, because I love beetroot. You're supposed to eat six tomatoes on the fifth day, so for breakfast I had two tomatoes with a bit of onion, salt and pepper. I am seriously surprised that I am not fed up with the cabbage soup diet yet. I mean, don't get me wrong, I am definitely ready to be done with it and eat normal food again. But I was expecting to get a gag reflex of just looking at the soup by day six. I still think the soup tastes pretty good. So I think that if you do want to try this diet, you should consider switching the recipe up a bit, at least a couple of times so you don't get bored. You can tweak it just the way you like it, as long as it doesn't contain any of the starchy stuff, like potatoes and donuts. <laughs> Today is the final day of the diet, and it feels like... It's been 84 years. I thought it would be appropriate to go out with a bang. It's time to bring out the big guns. Sauerkraut. The shit's about to get real. Yes, pun intended. Have you ever had a sauerkraut soup? I think they actually made it in my school when I was a kid. It's very savory, but like most fermented foods, it's really good for your gut and full of fiber and vitamins. You just have to be careful to not cook it at a very high temperature, to not cook out the probiotic aspect of the sauerkraut. For the sauerkraut soup we have some carrots, red bell pepper, celery, onion and two cans of sauerkraut. Today I can also have brown rice, but I'm going to replace it with a little bit of barley towards the end of the cooking so it won't burn into a mush. This is sour. I think I'm gonna go add some stevia. But this is definitely very different to the first three soups. But it's okay, it's good. Okay, where do I even start? First of all, who came up with these extra rules and why? Is there some sort of a reason or order 
or science behind these random guidelines? Why is it just unlimited vegetables in one day and another day is eat six tomatoes and a pound of chicken? Is it just to keep us from getting bored? Is it specific things at specific times like here you must be craving carbs by now have a baked potato. You must be craving sugar by now, so let me stuff you with bananas. But let's also give you some milk so it all comes out the other end as fast as it goes in. Or was it just some random person that decided to put together a bunch of completely random rules just to see how many idiots would blindly follow them? <laughs> And let me remind you that the rules say that you are allowed unlimited amount of soup and unlimited amount of whatever it is, fruit, vegetable, whatever. This video of a miracle peel a pound weight loss soup even claims that the more soup you eat, the more weight you will lose because the soup takes more calories to burn than it contains. So how does that work then? by turning your body into a nuclear factory? What if you ate just this soup every day? And I mean loads of it, so it would take loads of calories to burn and you ate nothing else for the whole year. What would happen? Would you turn into a black hole? I hate to break it to you, but the negative calorie foods are a busted myth. So at this point, let me take you through how much weight did I actually lose in those seven days? Was it the promised 10 pounds or even 15 pounds as some of the videos and article promise? On the first day, I had five, six bowls of soup, half a watermelon and a box of strawberries. After the first day I had lost 0.2 pounds. To say I was underwhelmed is an understatement. On the second day I ate four or five bowls of soup, some broccoli and a baked potato with a tomato and sauteed vegetables. By next morning I had lost nothing, not one ounce. On the third day I was getting frustrated but I had about four or five bowls of soup and a quarter of watermelon. By next morning I had lost 0.8 pounds. Then the bananas and milk day came. I was sure that I had lost at least 10 pounds since I clearly no longer had any internal organs. Next morning I had lost 0.4 pounds. By the end of this challenge I had managed to lose exactly three pounds. Was this kerfuffle all worth losing three pounds? I shat fire. My house plants died of the overload of toxic gas. My husband filed for a divorce and my children are still having nightmares from the sounds they heard on the night of the banana day. Three pounds? That's probably gonna come back with the first lick of the single piece of bread. Anyway, you can also have a look at the before and after results from this ravishingly underwhelming transformation. As you can see, there hasn't been a huge change. So why are there so many videos of major weight loss transformation on YouTube? And why did I not have the same results? I mean, I drank the water, even though exercise was not recommended. I did exercise moderately at least every other day. I followed all the diet rules. I didn't cheat, not even once. I am overweight, so it's not as if there was nothing else left to lose. I have lost weight before with other diets. Heck, I lost more weight in my last video while I didn't exercise and ate what I wanted. I set off in a little search of answers and looked through a whole bunch of other YouTube experiments to see what other people ate. As far as it seemed, they all seemed to eat three bowls or less of the soup in a day, mostly because they were fed up with it. And if they had some extra fruit or vegetables, it was just a small amount. Nowhere did I find an experiment with anybody eating unlimited amount of soup and fruit and vegetables. And of course, I didn't have time to watch all the videos. And of course, I also did not eat a huge amount extra stuff. But it did seem to me that majority of the people ate less than what I had eaten. I am by far not saying that anybody who tried the diet is lying. I'm saying they're probably smarter than me and use their common sense. I don't know, maybe it's just my luck. I'm sure that there are plenty of people that can 
successfully lose a lot of weight using this diet, especially over a period of time. I guess it depends on multiple factors, from how much weight do you have to lose, how dehydrated you are, how much water weight can you lose, what was your calorie intake and diet before the challenge, how active you are and how many calories you burn. However, based on my experience, if you want to try this experiment, then maybe take these rules with a grain of salt. I'm sure if I had just had cabbage soup on its own, three times a day, breakfast, lunch and dinner, I would have lost a lot more weight. I'm obviously not saying this diet doesn't work, it's all a scam, but it doesn't work the same way for everyone and those promised 10 to 15 pounds are definitely not guaranteed. I also checked what the science and medical websites have to say about this diet. And according to WebMD, you should avoid any exercise, which I didn't, because there is not enough gas in the tank. Oh, trust me, WebMD. Everyone in my household disagrees with you here. There is plenty of gas in the tank just not much fuel. According to the Healthline, of course, this diet is not sustainable. It can leave you with nutritional deficiencies and should not be practiced long term. Both WebMD and Healthline agree that any weight you do lose will come back as soon as you come off the diet. The weight that is lost is one third water weight, one third fat and one third muscle. Is that what we wanted? No, it is not. Here I am working my butt off pumping iron to get those guns and on the other hand this crash diet is eating away my precious muscle and here is today's pro tip you know when the floodgates of your back door open and you have gone to the bathroom so many times that the skin you had down there has eroded away in the stomach acid it turns very painful I'm sure we have all been there at some point in our lives. And the cabbage soup can certainly take you there again. You know what the cure for the pain is? The numbing cream you can get at the kinky store. It works wonders. And don't ask. Don't even think about how do I know this? And why do I have it in my house at the first place? Shh. You're thinking, ah, uh -uh. don't think. And my bonus tip that could save your relationships an air purifier. While we're at this romantic topic, if you're enjoying these valuable tips I am showering you with, I would love it if you took a second to gently fondle your like buttons. And if your mundane life could use some extra buffoonery, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss my next crazy experiment. I'm sorry that this whole video has been a bit too much TMI and kind of gross. Should have really warned you at the beginning, shouldn't I? Whoops. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video. Bye!